and it's our chance to celebrate that Jesus showed up. Let's stand together as we sing.
from Zechariah 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. It's Palm Sunday. Enters this special week for the life of the church. Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey. There's been a donkey sighting this morning. Not here, but just a few miles down the road on Green River Road. That's where everything seems to happen, I guess. But as a church has a donkey out in front this morning, I've been told. So we, it, we're kicking the week off right. And uh, it, it is a special week for us in the life of our church, beginning today at Palm Sunday. Thank these young men for joining us with our Palm Parade this morning. And uh, it's, it's God save us. God save us. Hosanna. God save us. And we should say that with all our heart, mind, and soul in this day that we live tonight. God save us. And we'll, we do that this morning. Simple enough. In fact, this whole week, we've, we've known it. We've learned it. We've lived it. We've been taught it. We've taught others about this week. But it never gets old. And it shouldn't. It's, it gets maybe even more special all the time. When you just think about the redeeming work that our Lord and Savior did for us to atone for our sins, to die, to be, to be crucified, not just die, be crucified the way he was, to take the sins upon himself of all humanity, and then to be killed, to be laid in a tomb for three days. But death, that tomb didn't hold. The tomb was worthless. Because he's now alive. And we'll celebrate that once again next week and Easter Sunday. We'll do a Thursday night with a Monday Thursday communion service at 6. Then on Sunday morning, we begin with a 7.30 brief, short, praise the Lord, sunrise service. And a, a wonderful breakfast that's been being prepared already for that week at 8 o'clock. And then we'll come in here at 9, worship together. And we'll... Say together, he is risen indeed, and have excitement and joy in our hearts. And we'll go home fulfilled with the greatness of our God. Exciting week, but we get up to it. I'm going to ask you to do something and this week, that just a little assignment that you might consider this week. Just take one of the Gospels. Take the shortest one, take the longest one. I don't care. Take one of the Gospels and, and take a, a, a nice little trip of reading through it. Maybe if you read a few verses a day. You can read, if you want to go the shortest, you can read Mark if you want to. Matthew, you know, he, he was maybe, he wrote the most. I, I read John if you want to, want to see a, a true heart opened up. I kind of prefer Luke. So you pick, pick the one you want. But it just, just start off. Read it leisurely. Don't make it a, an assignment. Read it for what it is. It's a gift. It's a gift to you from God. Um, we had a great time yesterday. Natalie, thank you. Ashley, thank you. Teresa, thank you. Church, thank you. There were many names other than that that were part of this week and made it special. We even had a tall, thin angel yesterday <laughs> seated, seated in the back row back there. <laughs> Larry Williams. So he's always an angel, isn't he? And uh, so we had a good time. We had a little cave out here. If you saw one picture up there earlier, there was a picture of two children in that darkened cave in there and just see the amazement on their eyes you know the tomb is empty and it, they they give you a picture of that amazing uh look that they that uh, came out of that john can you, can you put that picture up there if you would i'll keep talking the best i can and uh <laughs> you're a pastor you do that well um isn't that great <laughs> that was right out here in our hallway and um so, yeah, we had a good time. We had 80-some kids, probably, well, likelihood, yesterday. There's still some cookies left over out there, by the way. These guys haven't found them all, but there's still some leftovers. And uh, uh, we, we told them about Jesus first, and at the conclusion of all their little places they went to, they picked up a puzzle piece, and they concluded right in here in the sanctuary, and we wrapped up the story for them here and then sent them off to their eggs. But uh, we, the sanctuary was packed. Love to see that again Sunday. <laughs> but it was fun. And it was a joy 
that we got to be part of. Um, that's the main things going on there. I want to share with you, though, uh, briefly, as brief as I can, about a meeting we held in here Tuesday night by our administrative council. It's a special called meeting. Uh, if you've been, we've talked about it some, many have been made aware of it, that the United Methodist Church has been in turmoil for since almost since the merger of two denominations back in 1968. There's been, there's been disputes and bickering and things going on. And, and the opportunity now has arisen that's been coming up over the last few years to possibly do, to separate ourselves from the United Methodist Church. That was brought before a vote of the Administrative Council on Tuesday night to discuss possibly moving to a newly formed denomination which will kick off on May 1 called the Global Methodist Church, still entirely Wesleyan, entirely John Wesley um, theology and, and uh, scriptural authority is foremost and at utmost at all times. And we discuss that greatly because the opportunity now has come up and we have an, a window of opportunity to might even get it done within the next three or four months. It doesn't come without a cost of leaving the church. There are, uh, you, you, there's some unfunded liabilities that the United Methodist Church has that would be our responsibility. We don't have that number yet, but it's, it, we'll, we'll share that once we, I hate to even throw out an estimate. The Ad Council has an estimate, but it's not entirely right. But, uh, we're, we're getting up the facts together. We've sent a note to the conference saying we'd like more information and, and uh, a go-forward plan from them. But we will likely, before this would happen, we would have a church vote. It's called a church conference. That's Methodism at its best, is conferencing. And what a church conference means that everybody who is a member, who is a member of this church, and you're present, the church conference when we'll vote on that. In order to leave, we'd have to have a two-thirds vote to leave of those present. We've got some 160 or so members of our church, and so uh, I, I doubt that we'd have that many here. It would be a little upsetting to our pastor if we get 160 members to a vote and, you know, 60 or so at church, but <laughs> but, um, but we, we're looking at this very strongly, very prayerfully. We'll have a meeting before that meeting. Methodists do meetings. That's one thing I've, I've tried to do I, in my... Uh, tenure here is to reduce the number of meetings because I come from a Kimball atmosphere that we meeting ourselves to death and then got into church and was almost worse. So we've, we've cut back on some of the meetings here, but we'll have a gathering and the target date for that would be a week from tomorrow night at six o'clock here. So it'd be the 18th to have a discussion an open forum and talk about it. So, uh, put in your prayers. In your discussions. We'll have a question and answer that night. We'll give some more dates and, and facts about it. But I want to just inform you that that's, it's, it's not new and coming. It's not something that's been lightly taken. It's not something that, that we're doing against anyone or, or any, anything but to be um, beholden to God's word and God's way. So, uh, so that's, that's coming down the road. That's as simple as I can put it in a five-minute dissertation at this very point, so moment. Thank you for your patience and your, your leadership as part of this church. You showed yesterday to the community that we're still vital, and we'll continue to be vital in, the, in this community, and we'll continue to serve the Lord with our heart, mind, and soul. Praise God. Let me have a word of prayer, and then we'll greet one another. Lord, you're a gracious and loving God. You meet us here as always. You love us more than we'll ever know, and you care for us throughout all eternity. So, Lord, we welcome your spirit and your presence with us today, whether you're coming in on a donkey or walking into this room. Lord, we give thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's welcome and greet one another this morning.
righty then. Make your way on back. This group does like to visit. Have a seat. You know, uh, much, much of how we see the world is not based on what's actually happening, but it's our perspective, right? It's how, how the world looks from where we're standing. And this morning I got a reminder of that. There's a young lady on the front row, and her granddaddy was talking. And I mean, she was staring a hole through her granddaddy. And then a, a few seconds into it, she, 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 she went from staring a hole to opening her mouth like, oh, that's good stuff. That's good. And then every once in a while, she'd have to look at her daddy and say, are you listening? That's my granddaddy up there. And finally, when she was convinced her daddy was looking, she settled down. But then she thought, you know, somebody else might not have been looking. They might not be listening. So she stared a hole through Pastor Steve. Like, are you listening? Because that's my granddaddy. This is important. Well, our, our Christian life is all about perspective. And today is a day, like that video we saw early on, the perspective changes on Palm Sunday, right? It's different than any other, any other time during the year. It reminds us that we need to have our focus in the right place. That little girl's got her focus in the right place. So in the next couple of songs, uh, let's get our hearts right. Let, let's get ready to receive the message that, that her granddaddy has prepared for us today. Because this is a special Sunday. Let's sing. together. Take a moment, Lord, and each of us bow before you, bringing ourselves before you to examine our hearts, mind, and soul. Lord, this Sunday's, again, as was just said, it's a little different. Instead of bringing others to the forefront this morning, and you know our needs and you know our present moments, and, and each of our heartfelt desires is to always bring others before you, and we do that readily this morning. So God, hear our prayers in behalf of others. 
But this week, we, we want to glorify you, praise you, and turn to you. We need you, Lord. We need you now. We need you for all time, all eternity. We need you to guide us, forgive us, deliver us, save us. God, save us. That's the message of this day. Hosanna. Lord, we can't imagine. As you rode in on the back of a, a donkey on this time of Palm Sunday, that we call it, that you didn't look down on your loved ones, your friends, even on the Pharisees, the, the naysayers on the sidelines, and look at each one with longing love, forgiving love. having a full desire that all might come to you. Lord, you don't want to leave anyone out. You want us all to recognize and come to you. And Lord, I pray this week is, is a force in doing that. That the message is loud and clear that we are sinners saved by grace because you died for our sins. Because you took it upon a, her, yourself to pay the great price that was needed to atone. So let us walk into this week with full knowledge that we're that vital to you, that you love us that much. But you don't want to leave us where we're at. You want to move us through each day of this week and move us to Easter to celebrate life risen life, resurrected life, eternal life, joy-filled life. So, Lord, prepare us for that this week. And as you prepared yourself on this day, thank you. No one else could do that, and yet you took it upon yourself. Your, your father gave you an assignment, so to speak, a, something so special that only you could do. So we are here this morning to glorify you in doing so and to say, God save me. Thank you, Lord. And let us now join our voices together in praise through the prayer that you gave us to do together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Hey, Tommy and Eddie here to talk to you about something really great, Palm Sunday. Yeah, that's the Sunday that we paint our palms purple to commemorate King Saul talking to that palm reader lady, and then we wave him in the air. <laughs> no, no it's not. Yes it is. No, it's yes, not. Yes it is. No. What Bible do you read? Palm Sunday commemorates the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Now picture this, Jesus rode in on a donkey while the crowds put their cloaks and palm branches all over the ground shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. That's what I said what I meant. Okay, now picture this. Jesus' popularity was going viral. I mean, he just raised Lazarus from the dead in the same community just a few days earlier. Wait, post-dead Lazarus was maybe at the very first Palm Sunday? Yeah, probably. That's so cool. I bet if he was there, he was probably like, And you're a thriller, thriller, Jesus. You raised me from the dead when you said, Get up, get up, get up, ooh! Now, to complete all of this, Jesus needed a donkey. Now, you'd think that a king or a prince would ride in on a horse, but not Jesus. He knew the message that he wanted to send. You see, a donkey represents peace. Anybody riding a donkey represented peaceful intentions. Yeah, it says right here in Matthew 21, it says that Jesus sent two of his disciples to get him a donkey. Yeah. Hey, I wonder which two he sent. Mm, maybe Thomas. I doubt it. I bet he sent Andrew. Andrew would totally do that, and probably... Tony. I bet he said Andrew and Tony. Tony is not a disciple. Oh, sorry. Tony is. It's still not a disciple. What translation of the Bible do you read? Jesus needed a donkey, so he asked two disciples to go get him a donkey. He told them they would find one in town, tied there next to a colt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he says, untie them and bring them to me. And if somebody asks you about it, you tell them the Lord needs them? Jeez. Yeah. What? Well, Jesus just told his disciples to go steal a donkey for him. What Bible do you read? It doesn't say that at all. I can't figure this out. I mean, Jesus, he changed water into wine. Cool. He fed the 4,000. He fed right? the 5,000. What? He fed the 5,000. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Not the fourth. It's the 5,000. We're splitting hairs. I'm sorry. Jesus fed a large group of people. and That's cool. He, he healed people with leprosy. He raises Lazarus from the dead, and then boom, he's like, hey guys, go steal me a donkey. I'm just saying, I don't think that's very WWJD. The significance of Jesus riding on a donkey, which he did not steal, was to fulfill the prophecy that is found in Zechariah 9.9. Yeah, but... The and the king, riding in on a lowly donkey with his way paved with palm branches, the palm branches symbolized triumph or victory. The what? The palm branches. The bran... I palm branches, palm the Sunday. I thought it was the palm. They should call it Branch Sunday because that's confusing. We all have palms with us all the time. I just, I feel bad. I, I'm sorry, Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is a time for us to prepare our hearts for the agony of his passion and the joy of his resurrection. So this week, let's cover the road to the cross with our hearts, our souls, and our minds as we reflect on the final week of Jesus' life. And let's celebrate in anticipation the return of the King of Kings. It's one of my favorite videos of all time. <laughs> Tommy and Eddie said it well. We, you know, we, we were all raised in the church, or many of us raised in the church, and, and went to Palm Sunday, and, you know, did we get it? Maybe a little bit, but that's kind of the people we are sometimes. So they cleared a lot of things up for us today. So palms, and everyone loves a parade, don't they? Parades are, are fun, they're exciting. Kids love a parade because of the candy and, and the stuff thrown their way. And we go to parades in, in, in many different types. And, and you know, sometimes there's a beauty queen in the parade. Sometimes there's lots of fire trucks and sirens, right? Kids are doing this a lot. There's the horses, hopefully at the end. Marching bands. How many of you, when you were young, marched in a band in the local parade? Yeah, I did. My brief time in the band that they let me be play a trumpet. Probably wasn't for a joyful noise, so I didn't play it too long. But uh, we, you know, the, the parades are from, but this was a different parade. It was different than others. This wasn't, it was, you know, think about the, the elements that were part of this parade. They were palm branches. They were their coats that they laid on the ground. They were 
the down and outers, the beggars, the people who hadn't gotten a good deal and kind of gotten a raw deal in life, those are the ones. And, and the ones who celebrate usually at parades, they were on the sidelines. They were kind of like they were up in the balcony questioning everything or putting it down and, and those kind of things. So this, this went started off this week contrary to what the establishment wanted, but it was very much for what the people wanted because they wanted a conquering hero to, to ride into town. And they really didn't, didn't care that he came in on a donkey because I think they could identify with that even better, that he would come in. Also, they identify with that from, from King David as well because that's the way King David handled things today. He, da King David was not only a man after God's own heart. In many ways, he was a man after his own people too. He knew how to lead well. So that's one of the reasons the people loved him. But we've seen a lot of praise. I, I wanted to, I just looked back through this week and, and decided to, to, to do some pictures. And Elvin probably can't see this this morning, but some of you that go back remember some of the World War II parades after this is MacArthur making a triumphal entry back into ticker tape parade in New York City around 51 or so, 1951. So the ticker tape fell, and, and a lot of people were waving these, weren't they? You always see in most any parade, especially a 4th of July parade, if you go to Otwell, Indiana on the 4th of July, you'll see a lot of people waving a, a flag. You'll see that. Or if you're at most any parade in uh, the fall, you'll see a politician waving one of these as well or have a, a, some kind of badge on with a flag on it. And they'll, they'll come in with waving all those things. You, you might go to see something like this. This was part of the parade for for General MacArthur when he came in. See all the ticker tape falls in New York City? Those, those sights had to be amazing to see at that time, the celebrations. And I always come to mind after World, right after World War II, the, the, the soldier grabbing the lady and kissing her in the, in the streets of New York City. And then you see politicians come in to pray. There's uh, Jack and, Jack and uh, Jacqueline, they, they, they paraded after their victory, and that was in 1960, I believe. I was around for that one. I remember that. So they, they paraded through the city. And then their fateful parade that took place for them was in Texas. This is one that we honor these kind of folks a whole lot. This is for the 1980 Olympic hockey team, the Miracle on Ice. We honor our sports teams, don't we, with, with tons of parades. We like to honor, especially in high schools. It seemed like when we were in Lagodi, the sirens were always going off through town. They had some kind of team winning something. And you had, a, you had the fire trucks out, and they brought through town. This was in 2019, when Teresa and I were in New York City. And you know, I'd just come on a year or two before that as a firefighter, at, at, or as, as a member of the fire, volunteer fire department down here at McCutcheonville. And, and just so happened, we were in... In April, there was a uh, tragedy that took place amongst the brothers. And this was a young man who was in the military, but also an active um, member of the New York City Fire Department. And he was around 40 years old, and he was killed in Afghanistan. On, I believe it was the day he was supposed to return home, he was, he was killed. And so the streets, see all those uniforms? They lined the streets from, for like two miles. And it was like, it was, wasn't that deep because that's about the time they, they took him off the truck. But it was like six or eight deep. I mean, they were everywhere. You couldn't cross the street. They wouldn't let you. You didn't want to try to cross the street because there were policemen and fire, firemen and everything right there. And it was such an honor and such a, a solemn event. And we, we were able, they broadcast it out on the speaker. We could hear some of it as they broadcast. So, parades. There, there are some are sad occasions like this, some are victorious occasions. And then there's the occasion that Jesus came in on the donkey that we take to now. But the people, they had it right. They had it right when they shouted, Hosanna, God save us. Praise you, but God save us. And we need to be saved, but we, we need to be saved from the bad people. The, the oppressors, the, 
those who have come against us. I, 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 I really, I don't going to discredit them so much that they didn't know they needed, they needed God in their lives. I, I would never, ever say that because I believe those are the ones we learned through this that, that throughout all this that they were the ones beholden to God. It wasn't the, the church people that were. It was those who were the, those people who had followed him, listening to him, obeying him, coming to the Sermon on the Mount, coming to the feeding of the 4,000. <laughs> <laughs> you know, coming to all those times and, and knowing that he was the one who could heal them. But they also, as we would have done as well, wanted deliverance. We might say today, if, if we would sh save it, shout to Jesus, I, I'm afraid we've, you know, we, we would probably say, save us from our government. <laughs> save us from, from our, our racism or save us from our, ourselves. Save us from our, our bad behavior, Lord all those things that, that we, we are up against in our day-to-day -day journey, we, we need to save. Save, save me from high gas prices. It might be the most recent problem that, that we deal with that we might shout out today instead of you know, shouting the most important thing, save me, save me. This week, this week, if Candy is right here to say, God, save me. Save me. You took this place for me. You took this ride into Jerusalem for me. You took that visit to your friend's house in Bethany where you anointed and Judas decided to betray you because he wanted money. Save me. You turned the tables. Because the church was corrupt. Save me. You had supper on, at the beginning of the Passover with your dearest friends, and they wanted to argue about who was the greatest. Save me. You served them. Oh, you, you, no, you washed their feet when they should have done that first. Save me. You went to the garden and took on all that agony. And we slept. Save me. They came to arrest you. Oh, we got indignant about it and lashed out. But you healed that man, that guard, and said, it's okay. Save me. They carried you away and we all left. Because we were afraid, didn't understand save me. He said, we didn't even know you. It's too treacherous, too difficult. Save me. And then they nailed you to the cross. Couldn't even bear to watch. Save me. Till finally you breathed your last and said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit and died. It seemed over. And that's when I really needed saving because all seemed dark and lost. I need that desperately. Three days later, we decided to go check on you. And you know what? You showed me how you were going to save me. Because you live. You live. That's Easter. And you did save me. Friends, we have that kind of grace, and that kind of glove. And this week proves it. Let's go into this week with knowledge of that. Here's the scripture where he sent them to get the donkey and to tell them the Lord needs it. He didn't steal a donkey. He, this had been prepared back in Zechariah. I read this scripture to you before. And friends, I wanted to show you this scripture, the passage this, more because, this, this morning because these people have been praying for this week to happen all throughout time. And, and this, this, because the scripture spoke of the Messiah coming, this was a scripture that Zechariah delivered from God. He was the messenger. He, was the prof he prophesied this some 550 years before it happened. Do you think your prayers sometimes are too long to be answered? <laughs> You got 550 years laying around for God to answer your prayers? 
That's what it took. And we, we pray about and have knowledge of his second coming. It's been 2,000 years since his first coming, a little over, and now he's going to come again. We need to be prepared for that moment as well. So Jesus comes to Jerusalem. He enters into the city. They brought their cloaks and threw them on the ground, on the road. When he came near to the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, and that was one of a very, very impressive place as we got to visit Jerusalem where he would have entered into the city. Very thought-provoking place. The garden was even more so. The whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices because they had seen, this, this was how, why mostly they think they were praying, because they'd seen so many miracles. They knew of his greatness and, and that he was different and he was sent from God because he had performed miracles right before their eyes. Yet the mission for them wasn't complete and he didn't even consider what he was about to do. But they shouted, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Glory, glory, glory. And we glorify him this morning. We enter to this week. We do. We're thankful. Our, our palm branches were waved this morning as the children came in. Hosanna. God save us. I got to be one of those children this morning. That was pretty new. I've never waved a palm branch on Palm Sunday. It was a first for me. Hosanna, Son of God. Save us, deliver us. Now I want you to step back a moment and consider what he did, what Jesus really did. I think in, in all of Scripture, Paul summed it up best in Philippians 2 about what Jesus, I don't want to be trite about how, what, actually what he did and how we enter into this week. And, I, and that's what verse 5 tells this is This is the attitude to enter this week, to have the same attitude entering this week as Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Sometimes we think we're God. <laughs> Sometimes we think we have all the answers. I think if you would have interviewed Simon Peter on the time, at the moment, a few moments, or uh, the morning after Jesus was arrested, I think he would have been so empty. He would have had no answers. He would have not had any, any inkling of, of what, what had taken place. He would have been stunned from disbelief of what had happened the night before and, and empty from what was going to happen or not any knowledge of what was going to happen. I think he probably forgot everything he'd learned to that point, and he was an empty vessel. See, he thought it was more about him than about Jesus. This scripture puts it squarely with him. He gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born of a human being, born of Mary. And when he did appear in human form, he humbled himself. Once again, we see that passage, humbled himself. It's so much a descriptive word used about Jesus. In obedience to God, and he died a criminal's death on a cross. But that's not where the story ends. And therefore, and there's the therefore, this is what God did. God elevated him to the highest place of honor and gave him the name above all names. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the King of Kings, as we say up in front on our banners. How appropriate that is this morning. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. To the glory of God the Father. Didn't Paul give it to us well? 
can't argue with any of that or it's not even hard to understand any of that and when you think about what price was paid this week. The cost of being a disciple for us? Yeah, there is a cost for us. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. That's a hard passage. That may be one of the more difficult passages for all of us to encounter in our life that, that Jesus teaches us, teaches us to totally submit to him, to turn ourselves to him, and we too carry a cross. There will be some hardship. There will be some negativity, if you will, to call it a common word of the day, I think. There will be some words spoken against. And there will be a price for disciples to pay as well. And we, think, we see that paid by the, those who follow Jesus closely. All those who went out after him were martyred for their faith. What was it? Paul spoke of how often he was beaten or placed in prison or, or left within an, an inch of death. Shipwrecked. Everything was about the cost of discipleship. And Diedrich Bonhoeffer, remember, he was the great martyr of, the, of, of World War II, really. He was, spoke out against Hitler and lost his life right at the very end of the war. If he just almost survived another day, he would, have, he would have made it through and they executed him right at the very end. But he said the life of discipleship can only be maintained as long as nothing is allowed to come between Christ and ourselves. And he, remember, he was, he was going to get, and the rest of this statement really speaks a lot to about how, what he was up against in Hitler because Hitler, you know, he, he misplaced religion. He mis, misplaced people. He thought some people were superior to others. He, Hitler did. And, and he, he had a worldview that was far different than a Christ view of giving everything. So this week, let's walk closely. That's, that's my words to you and those listening to us, those watching later, is let's walk closely with the Lord this week. Let's give him some time of prayer and discernment. And, and as I ask you for to read, maybe read one of the disciples, participate this week. No, take each day as it comes. That's why you can read it slowly. You got, you got a few days to encounter this. So today is Palm Sunday, which marks Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, the beginning of Holy Week. But remember the crown that he, they might have placed on his head as he came in to, on this Sunday was replaced by a crown of thorns just a few days later. God save us. Let's pray. Lord, uh, we praise you this morning on Palm Sunday as you triumphantly entered into the city of Jerusalem. And you came to save each of us. We bore those stripes when you felt those nails. And you wore that crown of thorns and you did so with humility, with purpose, with love. And spoke, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. hard to swallow. Lord, let us slowly and purposefully walk this week to the cross and encounter the saving grace that you intended for all of us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a great week. Come back Thursday night.